stories of life with John, Super Ted, and Truzo. You might be wondering why, I, why I'm in here. Well, it's got to do with the story that I'm telling you today. It's called Robert Bruce and the Spider. And I'm going to pretend to be Robert Bruce. I'm going to tell you the story, how he thought about it and felt it happen. So it happened 700 years ago that the Scottish country, the country of Scotland, wanted to become free from the English. They wanted to have their own king and rule themselves. They were tired of being treated badly and cruelly by the English people. My name is Robert Bruce and I'm a Scotsman. It happened that during the time when my country wanted to be free from England, there were many battles fought and many times our Scottish soldiers were beaten back by the English. They were a far more powerful force of soldiers, many more men, very well trained soldiers and they kept beating us back. We tried as much as we could, but they kept taking more of our land from us. Well, eventually, the Scots made me the leader of their army. And, well, I got straight to organising what we needed to do to try and beat the English. I gathered my friends and called them to go and send out messages to other people that they knew. And soon enough, we had quite a sizable army. Not as big as the English, of course, but quite a big army. So I led this army, being entrusted by the powers and authorities at the time to lead our country, Scotland, into battle with the English. We tried. We worked hard. We covered much ground. We slept out at nights in the cold dew. But we loved our country and our people. We were willing to get uncomfortable and sacrifice all the luxuries back home to make our country free. Well, I took the troops a number of times, but each time we came against the English, they were far too powerful and too smart for us. And they beat us back and they kept beating us back. But I took my men again and we fought the English six times. Six times we lost. They beat us back. And they so badly defeated us the last time that we were scattered everywhere. My men disappeared. Every man for himself. They went left, right, center, back home. And me? Well, the English wanted me because I was the leader. They figured that if they got rid of me, they could defeat the Scots once and for all. But I was not about to let them catch me. I went hiding. Sometimes I hid in the forests. Sometimes I hid in the mountains. Sometimes I hid in poor people's houses. Well, one time I was in this particular place. I couldn't stay there very long because I knew that wherever I hid, the English were trying to find me. As I lay there, in this old poor person's house, I thought to myself, how many times have I fought? How many more times will I have to fight? Will there be an end to it? Will my country of Scotland and the people of Scotland that I love so much ever be free? Well, I lay there, there was not much else I could do. It was getting late. I tried to sleep, but sleep would not come to me. I was so restless. I was thinking about all the times I battled and the plans that I'd made. 
and that I shouldn't have done that and I shouldn't have gone there and I shouldn't have sent the men in that direction. All of these things came back to me. I felt like a failure. I felt so discouraged. I was almost ready to give up. The whole night I tossed and I turned. Oh, Ted. Oh, but I couldn't get any sleep. The morning finally came. And in the morning I was so tired I could hardly get myself up. And as I was looking up at the ceiling, I noticed something there. I looked a little more closely. It just interested me, got my curiosity for a little while. It was a little spider. She was just hanging from this thread. I guess, well, it did look to me as though she was going to try and build her new web. As I watched her, I noticed dangling from the end of a long strand. And she started swinging. Oh, she swung and she tried to reach the other beam. I guess she was trying to stick the long strand from one side to the other. Once she could do that, she could probably start building a lovely looking web. Well, I watched her. She tried a total of three times. And she couldn't get her cobweb to stick from one beam to the other. She failed three times. But you know what? When she started, I don't think she set about to fail. I'm pretty sure that that little spider was thinking about succeeding, being able to make her web. I watched, and as I watched, I became more curious, more interested. I wanted that little spider to succeed. I wanted to see her make that web. She tried a further three times, but with the same result. She couldn't get the long strand to stick on the other beam. I really wish I could have helped her. I was so enthusiastic about watching her. It helped me to forget about all the failures that I had. And then the seventh time, there she was, dangling from this little strand, swinging, swinging, swinging. Would she be able to make it the seventh time? I watched. Oh, I hope she can do it. There she goes. Yes, she made it, she made it. And now that she quickly fastened the cobweb to the other beam, she could start making her web. I sank back on the bed of straw that I was lying on. And I thought to myself, that spider never started trying to build her web with this idea that she would fail. She always thought that she was going to do it. No matter how many times it took, she was going to do it. But then I thought about myself. I tried six times and I failed. If a little spider can do it, I'm a man, a big strong man leading the army of Scotland, the country that I love, the people that I love. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to try a seventh time. So I did. I grew in courage and enthusiasm and passion. And I started planning what we would do. I left the poor house, the poor man's house. And I gathered some of my friends. I went to visit them quietly. I had to be careful because I knew the English were still looking out for me. I managed to talk to a number of my friends. I told them all the plans that I had. I've been thinking pretty hard, been going over how many times the English beat us and why they beat us. Pretty soon, when I had a number of friends with the plans firmly put in their heads, I told them to go out, gather as many people that were willing to join us again. We would try one more time 
to beat the English and take back the country that belonged to us. June 24th came. The year was 1314. We had gathered all the men together. I had told them of my plans. They were ready to free their country and to rule themselves. We marched against the English in the famous battle of Bannockburn. We fought fiercely until we beat the English back. Even though we were small and they were large, we fought with hearts and courage. We took back our fair land. We drove them back into their mother England and we claimed Scotland for our very own. You might be wondering why there are a few more people here other than Super Ted and Truzo. Well, I needed some more men. I needed reinforcements to come and help us in that final battle of Bannockburn. So I brought a couple of extra friends along. Soon enough, the Scots thought I'd done a pretty good job. I was really just interested in helping my people and freeing my land. But the Scots thought I'd done a good job. They made me the King of Scotland. <laughs> what a fun memory it was at my coronation. That was a, a grand battle. It was a hard battle. Kids, in our lives, we face some hard choices and some difficult battles of our own. You know, so long as you're trying, you're never a failure. Whilst you try, you cannot fail. You may make mistakes, things may go wrong, but sometime, eventually, you'll find the solution, you'll get it right, you will succeed. Don't give up. Keep trying. No one's a failure while they keep trying. The best things in life, the most important ones, the ones that are the most valuable, they always take effort and energy. But it's really worth it in the long run. I hope you've enjoyed this story about Robert Bruce and the spider. There's lots of little things and people that can encourage us along our way. So don't give up. Hang in there. And I'll see you next week with another story. Bye.